Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Mech Spotlight. Today we're taking a look at the Warhawk. This Warhawk is not the classic mech Warhawk. This is from yet another legendary mech. The new update has now added the Warhawk to the lineup, including the Warhawk Kasai, also known as Raging Lotus. So this is the same uh, legendary mech that was just recently added uh, with the last update to MechWarrior Online. We now have it ported over to MechWarrior 5, thanks to the mod author of, mech, of a, yet another legendary mech uh, mod. So, this one, as you can see, I have left the paint on uh, the standard colors for the camo pattern. You have basically the same cam camo pattern, I believe, as what the uh, MechWarrior Online one ha has. Um, if not, it looks similar. I didn't really compare them. But uh, anyways, it's a Draconis Combine uh, paint scheme, and uh, the colors kind of reflect that. It's not terrible, so I just left it as is. I didn't feel the need to change it. The model itself is a little smaller than the classic mech uh, model from the classic mech mod. Um, it's a little bit shorter. Uh, the classic one has a much bigger uh, forehead, if you want to call it that, the, the bulkhead above the cockpit. Um, but yeah. I like this model, it, I, you know, as much as I like the classic mech models, they don't really fit in the game with all the rest of the models. In the context of the Mech Warrior 2 remake mod, perfect. And But when you're using it with all these other uh, contemporary models, it, they don't really fit in. So I like having uh, these contemporary models to play with. Uh, this one looks nice. I don't know if there's really anything special added to this legendary version as opposed to the uh, standard Warhawk model. Um, there's a bunch of standard variants, uh, as is typical with the mechs when they're added to uh, the yet another legendary mech mod. So, I like it. Um, it Because it is a little bit smaller than the classic one, it does look like an 85 ton mech now, instead of uh, the, the classic one to me looks like, you know, a 95 or even a 100 ton mech uh, when you put it up next to some of the other uh, assault mechs. So, this build, I kept the build basically the same as far as the weapon loadout. Um, you got the three ATM-6s, and then you got two large pulse lasers, and two ER medium lasers. All the weapons are on the arms. Um, that can be an issue if you're taking a lot of damage. Uh, you'll see what we did for that. Uh, you do have uh, some other slots unused. You got some Omni slots on the torso. Uh, one more missile slot on the left arm. But this is what the uh, Kasai loadout is. I decided to stick with it. Uh, I just obviously made them all tier 5. Uh, so the only other stuff I did on the arms, I did a laser insulator uh, on the left arm for all the, the laser weapons. And then I added the Alu ceramic couplings onto each arm for some extra uh, armor there. Uh, you can see this basically gives us about the same armor as what you got on the right and left torsos. Uh, so that, that definitely helps with the survivability of your arms, which you really need. Because if you lose those arms, you got nothing left. Let's go over the quirks real quick. Uh, you do have your standard clan quirk. The only stuff we're really happy about here, well, the mobility is nice as always. Uh, sensor range, range bonus is really helpful when you're playing missiles. Weapon, weapon lock on timer, minus 10%. That's really helpful with this build. Uh, and then you also get spread radius on your weapons, minus 5%. That's awesome. And a little bit of extra survivability there. Uh, the Omni Mech quirk is going to give you um, just some extra uh, repair costs and time there. Uh, the improved targeting for long range weapons. So this is anything where a tier 1 of that weapon would have an optimal range of over 540 meters. Which of course is all of our weapons in this case. Uh, so this is very helpful for this build because you're getting the weapon, weapon lock on timer again. Another minus 10%. Uh, and then long range weapon spread radius, uh, projectile speed, both help with missiles a lot. And then long range weapon beam duration is going to help with our laser weapons, obviously. So that's huge for this build. That gives us a lot of useful stuff there. Raging Lotus structure quirk, just giving us some bonus structure. There's no bonus armor here. Uh, Raging Lotus quirk itself, not a whole lot here, but you're getting some bonus torso twist. And uh, so, you know, that's kind of nice to have. And then the missile uh, projectile speed and missile cooldown modifiers. Uh, those are good. A 15% on each, especially the cooldown modifier. That's really helpful uh, with this build. So, 
what did I change as far as the internals on this? There were more heat sinks. I think there was like two more on this side, three more on this side. So that's what, like five more heat sinks that I had taken off. Uh, I made up for that by adding a laser insulator and an exchanger mark two. The cooling on this thing uh, stock was a little overkill in my opinion, but and especially once I got the laser insulator and the exchanger mark two on here. So that allowed me to drop a few extra double heat sinks. Uh, it was no longer needed. So I went with an advanced uh, missile FCS uh, and then jump jets. The stock build didn't have jump jets. What's a Warhawk without jump jets? So I added an improved jump jets uh, and then the active probe. Obviously, if you're running missiles, uh, active probe helps a ton. Um, speaking of missiles, these are ATMs, okay? The advanced tactical missiles do more damage the closer you are. So they actually have three different range brackets. Anything from 60 meters, which is your minimum range, up to 300 meters, you're doing 3.6 damage per missile. Uh, then from that, 300 meters up to 600 meters, you're doing 2.4 damage per missile. And then beyond 600 meters, you're doing 1.2 damage per missile. So this really kind of means that these missiles act as both SRMs, MRMs, and LRMs. Uh, they do have lock on because uh, they are using streak ammo and they have built in Artemis. So you're getting bonus spread reduction there. It's, I mean, using these with the quirks that we have on this mech, these things are deadly. Um, I really enjoy using them because you can start using them at long range while you're closing in, which you can close in fairly quickly with this mech because it is at almost 70 kph. Um, you can't really change that because of the Omni mech. Uh, fixed internals um, but that's what the Warhawk is known for mobility mobility and firepower uh, so and this is bringing it for sure the ATMs are nice as far as ammo for the ATMs I'm just bringing two double bins I found that that worked for most cases um, if you do start to run low you can usually find some ammo laying around uh, and pick that up if you really wanted to you could uh, probably find a way maybe even drop another double heat sink you can add another ton of ammo um something like that if you really wanted to you could drop this to a regular uh fcs instead of advance uh that gives you another ton or uh yeah that gives you an extra ton uh the heat was really pretty good even in a hot environment uh you really have to be pushing it to to overheat it's possible but you really have to push it to to get there um Obviously, we did shielding retrofit and a slick sweep for some additional evasion there. I think that pretty much covers it. Maxed armor all around. Uh, it's really a fun build, really an effective build. It doesn't feel like an 85 ton mech. You feel like you're playing something heavier, more effective, except for the speed. The speed is beautiful. Uh, considering the amount of firepower that you're carrying here, uh, plus the jump jet, who can argue with a 69 kph assault mech? So, I enjoy playing it. I hope you guys enjoy watching the, the gameplay here. Uh, we'll do the two standard missions, Battleground and a Ground War. Uh, both of them were a lot of fun, so enjoy them, and I'll see you next time.
Target destroyed. Target acquired.